Hello, welcome to Country Stitchers. I'm Liz. Hi, I'm Deb. We did a montage video right before we went away to our retreat. Deb showed her montage and her um, her work since the last one. It's awesome. If you didn't see it, go look. Oh, I, thanks. I love that. She has a section on there of trees now, which you I don't think they've seen that no, yet. No, I did a lot of stitching so when, on that since you've seen it, but yes. you saw it. <laughs> so when it comes around so, next time, don't miss it. I'll have to show that again. It's so much fun. And then we got to spend time with Janice Note yes. down at the EGA retreat She's and so do sweet. a Floss Friends. That yes. was fun. And then we had a Gadget Galore video. Mm -hmm. um, you did that, a great job. Well, thank you. But, you know, I was really surprised at how many viewers have joined us over the five years that didn't realize that was an ongoing segment early oh, on. Yeah. So they were all jazzed about my gadgets. There's a lot more gadgets than what I should. <laughs> <laughs> I used to sort of cherry pick those. So um, there is a playlist if you want to go see gadgets that has anything that contained a gadget component as part of an episode is in that playlist. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go see them mm -hmm. as they came about and some new ones that you didn't see on the last video, they're there. Um, but it's been a busy few weeks for us around the, the neighborhood, um, different places, different things to do. I just want to say one thing about, um, viewers and new subscribers. If you are new to our channel, we are, how do I put this? We are living different parts of our journey now than we did when we started. So we aren't doing weekly videos uh, for a number of reasons, not to mention scheduling. But I also am going through some changes with my back that make doing weekly videos um, more difficult. So we are spacing it out to accommodate me. Um, we are still stitching when we get a chance. Uh, so sometimes, I hate to say this, but sometimes we're just having a Liz Deb day. And we're not <laughs> doing a video. But we will work on that and see if we can't uh, improve the number of videos we get. Things are settling down. Mm -hmm. Holidays require a lot more of us physically, and I think that slowed me down a little bit. But we will uh, do our best to stay in touch. Mm -hmm. See how that works out. Yes. And... Deb, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna hand this over to her because she has a really cool story to tell. Oh. And I'm waiting for her to share that too. <laughs> uh, and uh, if you are new and you're a new subscriber. Um, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. And if you do subscribe, it costs nothing to subscribe to the channel. Doesn't take any space on your account. Mm -hmm. uh, what it does do, however, is you will get a notification when we do post. And sometimes it's helpful, especially when it's kind of sporadic right now, mm -hmm. to get that reminder that we did put up a video if you want to come see what we're up to. Yeah, or for anyone's video. Yes. Yeah. Everybody's. Yeah. And thanks to all the other floss tubers who help mm -hmm. make this a fun thing to do and mm -hmm. keep our zest and interest in needlework at an all time high. And thank you to all the manufacturers mm -hmm. and designers, everybody who contributes. This has just been tremendous um, growth in the industry. Mm -hmm. I did get a comment from somebody saying they hadn't been stitching for 10 years and were shocked to see all the changes that had gone on, yeah. especially in the gadget world, because they saw yeah. my gadget video. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah. It's like, oh, don't walk through the old uh, cross-stitch store anytime soon then. Or That's the thing that um, I think is just so, it must be so amazing just finding this passion in your life now because of everything we have offered to us now. Yes. Um, that's got to be unbelievably exciting. <laughs> well, and the fun part is to listen to them. And, and even when I was helping at the needlework store, people would come in and say, okay, and then somebody had this magnet thing I think I need. And then somebody had a bag for their project I think I need. And then they go down the list of everything they see us sharing <laughs> as a community on uh, YouTube. And it's funny, someone said, in an email recently that they had gotten a needle minder to keep track of their needles because they're afraid their cat will get it or mm. somebody in the house will step on it. Ugh. And they lost it in their recliner. And I'm thinking, oh, oh the days of that. I um, know somebody else that did that. Yes. And <laughs> I might just say, if you can't find it around your recliner, chances are it's magnetized because of your needle minder and it is stuck on one of your metal... <laughs> components in your recliner that's usually where they go so don't sweat it too much it'll eventually end up on the floor under your recliner i'm here to tell you that <laughs> oh man take it away deb um well 
talking about um, some of the things that we've been up to lately, my sister-in-laws and I get together. Uh, we're always together because our family, we all live within the area. But, Shouting distance almost. Yes. But we we decided a while ago that um, just us girls wanted to get together and do fun things. So at least once a month, just us girls will get together and, and go out to dinner, go to different places, whatever. Well, this time we decided to take a glass blowing class. Um, there is a studio not far from where we live. And anyway, it was so much fun. And if you follow me on Instagram, I had so many private messages that you wanted to see my end result because I couldn't leave that day. So I didn't have pictures of the end result. Um, it has to slow cool for about 24 hours. So you pick it up, you know, within a day or two of being there. So I wanted to make sure I showed you and I was talking to Liz all about it because we hadn't been together and yep. I hadn't even shown my pictures to Liz about the experience and, and what we did. All of us girls did something very different. Mine is a vase. Um, I decided to pick very opaque uh, glass pieces to put in mine um, to give it that look. I just wanted it to kind of go anywhere in the house. I didn't really want it to be a certain color. Um, it is very fun. You have to have two people to be able to do something like this. Um, so you have the blower and then you have the person holding the rod and turning the glass and and um shaping you know and and you're sticking it back in the oven when it's too cool and i will never take for granted ever again the rest of my life <laughs> the work uh, the work that goes into it and it, it is such an art this is not perfect at all it is a little wonky i think on um it's not a perfect round but i'm really glad that we did it it was so much fun some of my sisters sister-in-laws did uh trees which really turned out pretty one did a heart. Uh, a nut. My mother-in-law did a a uh, orb, a really large orb. Beautiful. Um, everybody chose different colors and everything. Just you know, you're making a unique piece. There's nothing else you yep. know that will look exactly like what you did. Mm -hmm. So it was tons of fun, um, and I just wanted to share that with you. That that was just another thing that we got to do. And so much you know fun. how you mentioned about it not being perfect at the top. Mm -hmm. That's how when I'm at like Home Goods or someplace like that, looking at those pieces, I, I I say carnival glass, but you know what I mean. Some of them have like really bright colors in mm -hmm. them, and I'm not sure what the actual term for it is. But I can always tell by looking if it's hand blown or manufactured oh, okay. because of those <laughs> changes that are in it, and I I find that to be part of the allure yeah. for me. Yeah, to those I pieces. mean, it's it's. I'm very proud of myself uh -huh. that I was able to, to get it done. Um, and I just was, I, I love that we took the class because I never would have known the patience and the work mm -hmm. that goes into it. You yeah. know, I mean, it amazing, amazing. Awesome. So much fun. Yes. So I have to tell another story real quick. Okay. And I didn't tell you this either. Okay. It's funny. Well, but, but going back to talking about floss tube. I did have some time to actually just binge floss tube for a little while because I had a procedure where I was down for like two days in bed and I just put it on and just, even if I wasn't like watching, I was just hearing. So, oh my gosh, Teresa Kogut has her um, market release video out. Oh my God, Liz, wait till, if you haven't seen them, because no. I know you're not on Instagram, so I don't know if you've seen, but oh man, she has some amazing new designs. Cool. And I love she has so many faith-filled designs. Like, anyway, if you get a chance, watch her market release video. Oh gosh, she is so talented, and I just, I really, uh, I just really appreciate her. She seems like such. I mean, we've met her a few times, and she's just seems like such a wonderful person. Um, but I got to watch Tara Sullivan. Uh, I did watch Brenda and Laura and Sweetwater Stitcher. Got to watch her. Anyway, as you're watching, you know, your videos can just kind of go into one another. That right. they just kind of keep going. Um, so Pam and Steph came up and I'm, it's Wednesday morning now and I'm doing my hair in the bathroom and I'll just put it on the counter and I'll just like let it play. And, you know, as I'm in the bathroom, get ready for work. And, uh, so Pam and Steph came up and Pam made a comment. She said, did we just go dim? I guess she was looking at her, the phone as they're recording. And maybe she thought that, you know, the light, they just got darker or whatever. 
at the exact same time that Pam said, did we just go dim? I lost the electric. <laughs> The electric went out in the house. It was so weird. Oh my gosh. It was the funniest thing. Like a real time video, huh? Yes, it was so funny. So it came on a couple hours later. We've been have we been having some problems back our road. Um, but it was the funniest thing. So I don't usually comment a lot, which shame on me, I should. I did leave them in comments because I thought I'm like, Pam, are you secretly a magician? Because <laughs> oh my gosh, I gotta tell you, you what happened. It was out. so funny. Yes, it, it was, was so funny. funny. Oh, but anyway, I just wanted to, I didn't even get a chance to tell that you. That is funny. That. Yes. Um, mm. Along those lines of comments, though, that um, you are or aren't making, uh, <laughs> we do get a few, and I checked the emails, and I did want to just make a couple of connections uh, for inquiries. Um, welcome to Cabin Needle Crafts. That's uh, one of the newer stitchers who's come into this, uh, this industry uh very recently. So have fun. Enjoy your uh, new experience. And then um, another inquiry came in for Deb's Gilaget color conversions for her piece. You need to just email Deb for that uh, conversion list. Um, and her email is in the description box. So anybody who wants those colors, just mm -hmm. send an email to Deb. Um, then I had someone... Um, her name is Debbie, very popular name. <laughs> um, ask about the motifs book that we referenced quite some time ago, a couple of years ago now. Well, and point. I show it every time on my montage, montage videos. Yeah. Yeah. So this is it. It's called the Sampler Company's Ultimate Sampler Motifs Source Book. And it's by Brenda Keys. It's a tremendous book. They actually improved it. The first copy I got is a stapled copy folded over like a general magazine construction then the next batch came in and they put them in this nice flat binding um hmm. that i got deb's copy and it lays much nicer when it's open than the other one but um that's the book and they're roughly 28 30 dollars somewhere in that neighborhood yep and i use this a lot i keep it up next to my montage um and Carol, when you're watching the montage video, I think I probably referred to my rat's nest. I keep a rat's nest on everything I stitch. She knows this. <laughs> she leaves them behind now and then, too. Um, and you wanted to know how I keep track of, you know, the threads that are in there and do I actually use the threads from it? I do. And, I, you know, until you asked me how do I keep them straight, because sometimes we'll have a couple shades that are only a shade different. I don't know. I never even had... It didn't even occur to me <laughs> that I would have a problem until you said something. Yeah, thanks. So, thanks, um, Carol. Yeah, now I'll, now I'll probably be like, oh, darn it, Carol. <laughs> I know what I do. I just lay it there. If it's close, I just go, yeah, good enough. And I just okay, pick but up a little spot. That's just what I do. Um, I just keep it. Uh, usually if I have a Q-snap or I have some extra fabric folded up under the Q-snap, my rat's nest is tucked in there. I keep it on my montage in the corner. Uh, I don't know. It's just how I... Uh, don't want to waste roll. that overnight. It's how I, sure, yeah, right? that's right. You don't want to waste it. Um, that's right. Then I need to borrow your pictures for okay. one second then. All right. I did receive um, an email from a uh, viewer, Lori um, Rebel. I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but uh, you asked about stores. You said you were in California. I think you might have even referenced the Southern California area looking for a needlework store, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, they don't have a lot to offer. True, they have basics like DMC, hoops, some kits, things like that. But if you want overdyed threads and you want to see overdyed fabric and you want to play with it and touch it and, and feel it, um, there is a site called Needle Travel. Needle? Oh, you want the picture now? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you two screenshots. Um, they have a website as well as um, Do you want me to as, it up? as well as an app. Yeah, this okay. first one is Needle Travel. That's the the mast on their app. I went out to. Now you'll notice it says there are two hundred and seventy seven stores in California. I don't know if that's clear. Yeah, there we go. And if you'll flip to the next one, mm -hmm. this next one, um, this is a list of the metropolitan areas and the stores that are in them. But you can access this information, put in your zip code, and it will give you much more specific information. 
then you can call and <laughs> see if they're still in business. It's not that your your comment in your email suggested that needlework is more popular in some areas than others. I don't think that's it. I think it takes a large number of people in an area to support a needle workshop. Oh, yeah. So generally, you're going to find them in larger metropolitan areas mm -hmm. as opposed to smaller areas. And often what's happening in our area is that people who have had them for 30, 35 years are retiring, but no one's taking over the shop. Mm -hmm. So that shop goes by the wayside. So, you know, it's hit or miss, but keep trying and um, hopefully you'll find a place... It's a, it's a fun day trip, no matter how far you have to go. Deb and I do that from time to time. We'll just take off for a shop that we haven't been to and check it out. So yes. you might have a good, good time. Find somebody who wants to go to lunch. <laughs> uh, Sandy, she wanted to know, a while back, we posted something that was stitched in sampler threads, dungarees and mustard, which I think mm -hmm. is, uh, what is the name of that pattern? That is Manny Dodonna's Blue Quaker Sewing Kit. Okay. Pretty sure that's the name of it. Okay. Uh, okay. And I did... Also for you. Okay. Um, there was a gadget, again, a while back. She recalls showing a needle puller that looked like a skinny tube. Could mm -hmm. you direct me to where I can buy it? Yes. Uh, and maybe like what it's called. Put out by Rainbow Gallery. And it is a needle puller. <laughs> that okay. is exactly what it's called. And it is a tube. And it has a magnet on it. So you can hook it on your scissors... And then you can detach it from your scissors, pull your needle through, oh, put it back on your scissors. Oh, I know which one scissors. you mean. Yeah, you gave me one of those. Yeah. So it's yeah. on a Rainbow Gallery card, and it's usually, I'm going to say, mm -hmm. more prevalent in stores that sell needle point supplies because it's often used for those larger needles where you're getting through tight spaces, doing different stitches. But you can also find it online at mm -hmm. a shop. Um, they have them... Rainbow Gallery has its own website, too, I believe. Okay. So That does come in handy. I, mm -hmm. That is a gadget that I have had to use. <laughs> uh, Deanna, she wanted to know, because I talk about backstitching a lot, and I, I do love backstitching. Um, <laughs> she, I know. <laughs> <laughs> She's not feverish. <laughs> um, she wanted to know, when I do my own backstitch, uh, what color thread, like, how do I choose the color to use? Again, do you backstitch for other people? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> like, uh, because I add it to patterns that do not call for it all the time, you know, how do I choose what color I'm going to be backstitching? Um, for instance, when I'm, when I'm doing my um, phase one, two, and three of my houses, I'm adding so much backstitch to the entire thing. And I, I will change it. It, it. I can't really... I don't know why I choose what I choose. I don't, do I want it to stand out? If I want it to stand out, then I'm going to pick a color that is very different from the, the, contrast the is stitching higher. that it's going to be next to. Yeah. If I want it to just kind of give me a precise, really crisp, beautiful edge, then I'm probably going to stitch it in the exact same color that I did my cross stitches in. Perfect explanation. Um, that's, yeah, that's the only thing that's I can think of. Spot on. Um, Oh. <laughs> you notice in the days when you got kits, and I think your dimensions kit is like this too, they'll use 3371 as the backstitch color for almost everything. And, and that got a little old after a while. Cause yeah. That's just, yeah. that's like taking your black crayon and outlining everything you color. <laughs> I'm serious. Remember when I was a kid? I'm going to make that line look really clean. <laughs> I've been there, done that. Oh, that's so funny. So I got this question on Instagram. Um, I don't know the answer, but I think you will. Um, she wanted For to sure. know, um, this is more of a beginner question. Um, she wanted to know what is Fiddler's Cloth? Oh. And compared to Ada, uh, like, is it different? And did you ever use it? Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. And yes and no. And <laughs> <laughs> um, Fiddler's Cloth, if it's what I used, is just a type of Ada. And it has sort of an oatmeal woven sort of natural look to it. Um, but it, that's my only way to explain it. It had a, almost a rough sort of look to it. And 
That's really about okay. all I can say. So okay, it has large holes. Mm -hmm. Like it did. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. all right. Okay, and all I'm, right. And I'm not sure that you can't get it in like 14, 16, 18. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. And just real quick, there's your little Rhett update. This was him waking up from his nap one day. Look at those cheeks. He always has rosy cheeks. He doesn't have a fever here. He just, and Matt had rosy cheeks and still will get rosy cheeks. And McKenna always had rosy cheeks. Huh. Yeah. He's doing good. He is busy, 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 crawling all over the place. Oh my gosh. In just a couple days, he'll be 10 months old. Wow. How is that possible? Yeah. I was thinking we're coming up to a year. And oh yeah. We're starting to plan his first corner. birthday. Yeah. Yeah. We have his first birthday in April, Logan's wedding in June. <laughs> yep. Lots going on. Yep. Lots, you lots. got some new stuff. Um, a couple things you were going to share. Yes, I did. Well, Liz gave me this for Christmas. We actually saw this finished at Salty Yarns and we both loved it. She bought it. I didn't know she was buying it for me. And it's called Wear Pumpkins Glow. And it is um, a with thy needle and thread. It's a cute one. So it's adorable. And then um, the other day I was given this as a gift and you haven't even seen this, but mm -mm. it's so stinking cute. Oh, I love it. So on my montage, you did see that I have a um, magnifier light that I keep on my montage. Um, it is made by daylight. And this one I'm going to put on my stitching to travel with because it is so so lightweight. It is an LED. It's actually a book light and it's by Gritten. This is the outside of the box. They come in all kinds of beautiful colors. This one is light pink. It is so super light. Um, has a really cool long light bar, which I like. And it'll go between like the blue and the yellow light or the blue and yellow light together. But I really like the clamp that it has as well because it has this movable part, which helps hold it onto like your Q, Q snap or whatever. Some, I have littler ones like this, not with this nice light bar. They have just a tiny little bulb here, but I don't care for the clamp because it doesn't have this part. So it like Snaps springs off, off yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. when you least expect it. This one's really cool. It also has a gripper there and here and on the bottom. Um, so I'm not going to use it for my reading i'm gonna use it for my stitching now am i correct that's now, usb chargeable yes i was okay. just gonna say it also comes with your cord um like i said they come in very very pretty colors lots of different colors but i'll show you um if oh there's the one <laughs> it's very bright um but there's like the yellow light and um oh and it gets brighter or and then oh there's the yellow then you can get the blue you can get them both but it's that really, cool. look how nice that is. Very cool. Yeah. And who gifted you that? Isn't that neat? Um, Elaine. Elaine gifted this. Cool. So I really, really like that. So that was cool. my, that's my new, um, my new gadget. Yes. My new toy. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this sucker will bend like however you, <laughs> however you want it to. So yeah, that's great. Great, great, great. I'm pretty sure she found these on Amazon. It's always a good place to start. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, I don't have to really put that back in the box now because it's going to be used. So, so uh, while we were at the EGA, I did get a couple things quick. I'll show you what I got. Um, oh, and Deb and I both got one of these. Yeah. Um, I'm going to forget her name. I know. I'm, Shoot. But please forgive me. We met so many new people at that retreat. Oh, um, that so a lot of people from Molly Pictures that we're looking mm. forward to getting to a meeting before too yes. long. But they're cute. They're just uh, for your orts. And she I guess. She had so many of these made. Yep. All different colors. She says she just sits and stitches them and tosses them in a bag. And then at the retreat, she makes sure yeah, everybody has so one. she's so sweet. Walks around. Anybody wants an or container. But guess what I did with mine? <laughs> Liz, this is my or container that travels with me. Liz gave me this jar. It's just a cute little ball jar. And she put a little cute little piece of paper in it. Um, and it has lots of orts in it. I take that with me because I like that it has a lid on it. And I'll just get that out, unscrew the lid. And that's what I use whenever we travel. Well, look how cute this is. 
It fits perfectly in there. Because the slipper. <laughs> it's wearing its little cute jacket. Yes. <laughs> but oh yeah, that was sweet. So that goes right into my bag. Awesome. All right. So we both got um, EGA pins. Yep. We joined the Mid Atlantic region, of course. And then I also got a needle minder. Um, it's just a dark blue enamel in the background. Um, and then I did sign up for the silent auction. They had a beaded kit by Deb Moffat, and I thought, oh, that'd be fun to, this is to pick that up. And it's um, shell wreath is the pattern. Wow. I thought that would be a nice little reminder of our first EGA retreat on the shore. Um, I may change a couple of colors. I'm not sure. But anyway, that was really neat. And so, obviously, that was my... My big win. Mm -hmm. um, and then I took a class. It was funny. I didn't know Janice was going to be in it when I went. Um, and it was a beading class to do a bracelet. And Janice is sending some revised directions. They might already be in my email and I just haven't gotten to them. But it's a cute little flower pattern. And uh, Deb had taken a jewelry class the very first retreat we met at. And it was really pretty. Oh, maybe. And it was it closer. Okay. By Lori Birmingham when she was still doing that. Um, and it had some similar steps in it. I remember looking at the directions on hers, but it was more involved. It had a like a double layer to it and it twisted, but this was fun. And it took a little while for us to figure out the the pattern. And they had a whole bunch of different beads. So anyway, that was it a fun little surprise class that they put mm -hmm. together and we got to take. Um, and that That's kind of a summation of that part of our time. And want to share what we're working on? Oh, uh, yes. I think, uh, let's see. I guess I'm going first. I should hush up and do it. There we go. Okay. All right. So <laughs> I hadn't done anything with this in a while. I took this along because I oh, thought yeah. while we're sitting at our table doing stuff, most of the time you're talking. I mean, that's what retreats are for, too. So we were busy visiting, and I could do this and not miscount anything, which was the great thing to take along. This was a little kit that I got, gosh, must be two years ago, um, and it's called the Colonel, and it's um, an Elizabeth Bradley needlepoint kit. So I just worked away on the background, and I'm almost done with the little guy. Good. So I just sat and did the cream color. I just have to get it up to here, and that's that's the end of it. And I am thinking, at one point I thought about framing it, but I'm thinking he'd go cute in that little dough bowl as yeah, a pillow, too. Yeah, that'd be cute. So I think maybe, if, little I don't know. Pillow. Yep. And either maybe a tassel or a button. or so I'll do something to the finished edge of it. <laughs> I got to figure out how to finish it because I've not finished needlepoint before, but we can figure out a pillow. So that's the first one I worked on. Cool. Or did you? Um, choo -choo. I, I had a finish, a stitching finish, so I went ahead and had a new start. <laughs> um, if you watched the last montage video, I let you know that I was taking this along just in case. Um, I had it all kitted up and ready to go. And yes, I didn't start it while we were away, but I did um, start it. This is from the Blackbird book, A Heart Remembers. So there's the, the book. Lots of really pretty designs in here, but the one that I absolutely fell in love with is this design. I love the colors. It is so pretty. It's so close to the red bird and the red chair and the, you know, the color palettes. They all kind of strike oh, me as similar. Really? Yeah. Well, this color palette's really different from that red chair one. I don't know about the other one that you're talking about. Uh, but this is, oopsie, good thing there wasn't a needle on that. There's not a lot of colors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's only eight colors, which is pretty cool. And they're really, really beautiful. Um, all over dyes. And I am stitching this on 46 count vintage light exemplar. And oh, bird's pretty. Yeah, isn't he cute? Yeah, he went there last time I saw it. Nope. Nope. So this is what I have so far. Over scissors. They're hanging in your bird. There you go. 
That's what I have so far. This will end up being a really, really cute petite size. Um, it is stitched with one thread over two, and I think it's going to end up being like eight by eight, I think, or even, no, maybe even a little smaller than that. So that'll be really cute, but very fun. Love that one. Very nice. Thank you. You might remember I picked up this little sampler horn book when we were at the market a couple years ago. And I started working on it while we were, let's see, while we were away. And I got a little farther on it. <laughs> There's so much thread involved in this. That's, that's <laughs> the whole thread palette right there. Easy, easy, easy little thing. Um, so I'm working on it. It's, let's see, I'm on A-E-I-O-U. <laughs> I was thinking about going ahead and doing that uh, dividing border all the way down. I thought, no, not the way you count, Liz. Just wait you it when you get there. <laughs> I'll be taking that out. But we were sitting oh, at the gosh. at the retreat when I worked on this to start with. And I think it might have been during Floss Friends when I got the border to match up. I was like, whoa, okay. Just straight X's, one stitch, two threads. <laughs> but I got it. So that was fun. Um, oh, and, and that was by Pam Reed. I'm sorry. I didn't okay. say who made the kit. Okay. So I really also want to get this phase three finished and I'm really close. I am on the last house, well, last building, which is the quilt shop. So that's the quilt shop. And um, this is what I have so far. Again, this is on 32 count, uh, raw natural. And I'm definitely gonna add, you know, some, some stuff in here, trees and stuff like that. I just didn't get there yet. But the clock uh, building's finished. And then here's, I'll just show you real quick the rest of it. Um, I still have to stitch Frank's place up there. Gosh, I hope I don't forget that when I go to get it framed. Don't let me forget that. Uh -uh. <laughs> that would make me cry. Yeah. Oh, my. Imagine trying um, to do it after it's been framed. Yeah, right. Oh. So that will be the last building once I get let that. Let see that Hamilton Watch Factory there. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> So that's that's getting there. It's on the home stretch. All right, this one I did just a little bit on when Deb and I were stitching together one day over the holiday. This was going to be what I stitched on over Christmas, and it sat there through the entire time the kids were home from the holiday because I got very little stitching done, except, yeah. like I said, when I escaped to Deb's. Oh wait, I didn't show them. I mean. Maybe you saw this if you watched our Floss Friends with Janice, but Liz made me a cutie patootie little bell snickle. Thank little you. Santa. I love the colors because they're so earthy. I love that. And the little snips we were given those at the... Oh, yeah, that was from the EGA. EGA retreat, yeah. too. Yes. So I'm sorry. I just wanted right. to show that. I forgot. No problem. All right. So um, it's uh, dinky dyed silks are what I'm using that came with this kit initially. Um... I have them on my little uh, fat quarter shop tags and a little um, project ring that was sent to us by viewer. It's very nice. And this is what we're working on. It's called Mary Noel. And it's very similar to the uh, other Twisted Oaks design rooster that I have. So this is where we got to. Uh, I started on the green, did the first part, but I added the green since we saw it last. Deb and I were. You know, I was looking out. at your curio cabinet the last time I was over there. You're gonna need a new curio cabinet. And it's not all in there. I've been taking it out and putting it on shelves to to make it work. <laughs> I am out you of can space. Bring them over here. I will. <laughs> I'll store them for you. Okay. <laughs> right. Wow! My goodness. Yeah, and it, you should do a curio yeah. cabinet tour. Yeah, that'd be fun, wouldn't you it? You know, that there's some things fun. I'm sure people have yes. not seen for a very long time that are in there. Beautiful that things. Oh, my things goodness. There's so many pretty saw. things in her curio cabinet. Mm. Thank you. Gosh. So other than what I showed you, I worked on my montage a lot. And then I did my finish. So Okay. I had one more. Let's see. No. No? Um, 
Oh, yes. I was going to say, I have one more piece of work. To, I was thinking this was a different piece that I'm not going to show you until we get to that part of our set. But this is it. Okay, so I was working on Kevin's Autumn Forest Quaker. <laughs> and I got the... Autumn Quaker Forest. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or that Quaker thing. Um, I worked the other night uh, on this tree that starts down here. So that's where I was working. Um, that's a fun one. It is. And it's all DMC. I know. Super simple. That was so much fun. Um, I want to get away from this corner and get down into this. I, I want to do that stag, which is the tree that I'm doing. There's a stag chewing on the tree. And so yeah. I want to get that section done. I like doing like the hunter. And I like mm. this, this like the two-tone trees. Oh, yeah. It was, that was fun. Yeah. Fun, fun, fun. All right. Good times. So, um... That's what we've currently been working on. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but we have some fun to share with you today that we're referring to. Oh, good timing. That is our alarm. Um, Deb and I have been doing subscriber giveaways since early in our channel. Mm -hmm. And we're going to send some things to two subscribers yes. today. Thank you very much for um, hitting that subscribe button and uh, for sticking with us. We appreciate all, uh, we appreciate everyone out there who chooses to be kind. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we sure do. Um, so if you can hold those up. Yes, ma'am. Um, we have two subscribers that we chose today to say a special thank you to. Carol Reed 9755 You will be getting two patterns. One from the Primrose Cottage. And that's a timely one of Valentine's mm -hmm. Day. And the other one is Lavender and Lace. And this one is, does it have a specific title? Told I, in a Garden, but it's, oh, oh Morning Song. Morning okay. Song, okay. She is so pretty. Morning Song. Oh my goodness. And then, they're almost the same, but well, that that is. Um, the next subscriber is Kiwi Corner. And... You will be getting another lavender and lace and the same uh, February 9 patch. And the lavender and lace one that's coming your way is called Nantucket Rose. Yeah, they're beautiful. I told in a garden, lavender Ooh. and lace. Lavender and lace, yeah, they are beautiful. So thank you very much for uh, subscribing. Um, we also want to let you know the people that were chosen for the grad bag. So gosh, back at our last standard format video no it was a floss friends at my house at christmas time before christmas <laughs> oh when we pulled the when we uh when we let you know that we wanted we were going to do it yes we wanted to do grad bags um just a special thank you um we are also given things periodically from from sweet viewers that would like to pass along um and we get to then share it with you. Yes. So we have quite a collection here. And we thought, well, then let's just do some grab bags. They're so much fun to do. I love surprises. Mm -hmm. And so that's, it's just so much fun. We said we were going to pick four names. We decided to pick five because it's been so long. So thanks for hanging out and just bearing with us. Um, so grab bag winners. Becky Reed, 6196. Judy Cole, 8284. Vonda Freeland, 7578, and A Stitchy Bug, 2014, Jar Mom Creations 20. So if I just mentioned you, you will be getting a grab bag from us. If you can get a hold of me, like Liz said earlier, my um, email address is in the description box, and then I will get your physical address, and we'll put together a nice goodie bag for you and send it your way. Yes. All right. Now, we have two small kits. Um, we'll talk about finishing in a little while, but these are from Fern Ridge Collections. Um, this one is a pineapple. And it's mostly like a week's dye work sort of felt along with threads. Um, and this one is William's Bird, and it's on linen. But... Um, the reason I thought about sharing these is because it's 
kits like these that give you an opportunity to try to do finishing for the first time without mm -hmm. taking a big risk <laughs> on something that you've spent a lot of hours on. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to do. It has a lot of buttonhole stitching, so you get used to that. It teaches you how to put things together. Um, so anybody who wants to do a small kit, they can finish on their own and see how it goes. Um, let's do um, okay. finish one, finish two. Or just finish? Uh, whatever is easier. Uh, Makes no difference. You want to do the word finish? Okay. Okay. So put the word finish in a comment and we will draw two people. Okay. All right. Okay. Are we showing finishes right now? Uh, we are on stalled stash. <laughs> so this is going to be something we're going to share uh, from time to time on our videos. It's fun because we all have those places we move things to. Um, Deb and I went above and beyond to find the ones that have stalled in our stitching areas. And um, it's kind of like when you're watching TV and it's buffering. I kind of look at these as those kits that are sitting there buffering and buffering and buffering and nobody's yeah. noticing or even doing anything with them yeah um and we can't call them works in progress yeah they're, they're no progress nope. <laughs> and so you you got two choices let it buffer or use it or lose it you know it's like okay so oh, i'm thinking that Hit the play button. some of these are going to get shared and uh with other people and it may be things that you haven't seen in a while as well yes my first one that I pulled out is the Pennsylvania German Stocking by Carriage House Samplings. Our oh, friend, that's funny. It, it Really? Yeah, yep, I have that one. Our friend Sandy was doing this, and it, it's just so pretty. And I remember going over to Salty Yarn and just choosing the fabric, getting the colors, and just starting it while we were away. And then it stopped. <laughs> <laughs> stalled. So, it's stalled. So this is my first stall. It's so stinking cute. Love the colors. And I mean, you could have this just hanging up and up on the hearth all year. This is what I have so far. And that's it. The, oh my. Let me see if I can let you know the fabric that I chose. Oh yes, good. Whew, good girl, Deb. The, the fabric I chose is 35 count dove for this piece. And it is stitched with just a few silks. That's all. I'm kind of excited to get to that bottom part in that toe because that's really cute. Well, obviously I'm not that excited because like I said, <laughs> it's stalled. I'm gonna have to get excited. On I a, gotta get excited. On an excitement meter of <laughs> no to yeah. We're pretty much at the no part right now. <laughs> Gosh, here's right. one that's been in my stash. Well, <laughs> safe to say since about 1996. Oh my gosh, yes. 1996 was my first retreat. Went with my mother and my sister. I signed us up for classes. We were celebrating my mother's 65th. Oh my gosh. She's not much older than I am now. When we <laughs> took her. <laughs> Somebody ought to be taking me to a retreat in two years. Um, it's called The Hair in the Basket. Ready. It was always, there was always a pattern designed for the Spirit of Cross Stitch Festivals uh, for that particular year. And this was the one that was oh, so cute. designed for that by Jean Farish. The hair in the basket. And you will note that I had learned how to use gridding. Um, See, I would, ne I I would never this do up. this. <laughs> Switch drive so crazy. I set this up. You notice there's only two in my stash that have this because that after would... I did it twice, I said, no, thanks. Yeah. I'm not going to spend the time doing it. Yeah, but drive me nuts. If you're, if you're doing a project with lots of open space, I will say that gridding is very helpful because you just compare your chart to your 10 count grid and you find your spot and you can work anywhere on it, which is really nice. But this is a fun stitch, but I changed it from her pattern um, and I converted mine to flower threads. Um, she does have flower threads listed on them. I say I converted it. What I mean is I chased them down because <laughs> by the time I started this, they weren't doing, DMC was not manufacturing flower thread anymore. So it took me a little while online to find all the colors, but I do have them and I'm really enjoying doing it with flower thread. Um, 
it's nice. It's like sulky. Just one thread, but well, you I, get the coverage worth of two. That's what I was, and Teresa was, Teresa Kogut was actually talking about some flower thread. She just did a design and her, in her model stitching, she used flower thread and she said the same thing. Mm. She really loved working with it. I'm I not sure. I'd have to watch it again to see whose flower thread it is, but she made the same comment um, because I think it was 32 counts she was stitching on and you only needed to use one strand of the flower thread, mm -hmm. not yeah. Not that you have to use two. A lot of people, it's personal preference. Yeah. One, two, whatever. Um, but she made the same comment that it has such good coverage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. So, and traditionally it's not, it's not over dyed. Flower thread is just like DMC. It's mm. straight. But do they make over dyed? No. Well, I don't know if anyone does, but I know that DMC I does. I thought of that. Yeah. But the fun, funny part was, I swear, as I was stitching with some of this, you'll you'll see another pattern later that I'm using flower oh, thread yeah. for. And to me, it looks variegated. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. And I green. think it's just, yeah, I yeah. think it's, I think it's because I got the threads from different lots. Oh, probably, And it, it's yeah. looking that way. So I'm kind of moving them around on the piece yeah. as I pull thread because yeah. I want it to have that look. Very so if cool. I can keep that lighter color one for a while and Ooh. keep it going, I yeah, think that. I'm going to. So the next one I pulled out that you haven't seen in a while. Oh my, yes. Yes, and you know, I totally forgot to, I didn't bring down the charts. Uh, this is... It's a big stack. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine it about, there's 26 uh, of these, right? Is it, pra is it... Um, Prairie Schooler. Prairie Schooler, it's the alphabet. Yes. And Liz and I kitted this up a long time ago. It was so much fun because we we are using some of the call for colors and then some that are different because um, we wanted some shading in, in and throughout. That was fun. We have decided to, I, I don't know if you started yours yet. No, but I I'm will. I'm stitching mine over one on, what is this fabric? This is Lugana. Okay. Is it 32? Yes. Okay. So it's 32 count. So Lugana is an even weave, mm -hmm. which it makes it nice. I am doing them in full crosses over one. Um, and I have A, B, C, D finished and I have to finish E, I have to finish the tapestry and now I'm working on F as well. So this is what I have so far because what we are going to do is three across and nine down because I wanted a nice long piece. And I want to just add something to this. This was very popular when I first started watching Floss Tube, which goes back maybe 12, 10, 10, 12 years ago. And D Stitcher from Canada was doing this, and she was doing hers nine across, three down. And hers is is the exact opposite perspective and layout. But she did this, and it was just fun to watch her do the whole mm -hmm. piece. And Deb and I fell in love with it, and yeah. we just had to start that. So I do still have this tapestry to finish here. This won't. This will be really pretty uh, with lots of color. And then E will be finished. And now this will be F over here. Um, and it is so cool because when you start, you know, pulling out things that you've started are stalled stitches. Yes. You really can reignite a passion again for yes. something because obviously there's a reason you fell in love with it. And I already know where I want to put this. Good Lord, I hope we're not moved out of here by then because <laughs> I want to put it in the black bathroom. It'll look yes. so nice with all the black that's in it and yes. I can frame it in a black frame mm -hmm. and it's going to go right between the sink and like where the toilet is. It'll be perfect right yep. there. Um, you need a card. A card. Uh-huh. And it just says, <laughs> stitching coming. Future home yes. of. <laughs> stitching coming. And just go put it up on those spots with a reference. <laughs> I should do that. Matt would be like, what is this? <laughs> what are we doing? Do post-it notes. <laughs> Boom, boom, boom. Oh, see sorry. how long it takes I to see it. It was Liz's idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. Okay, so um, this next one is the one I, I'm just going to segue to that one because it <laughs> goes with the um, comments about the flower thread, mm -hmm. but I want to find the picture to this so you can see the full thing. This is by Bygone Stitches. It's called A Quaker Christmas. There are two uh, of these. Yes. There's Quaker Christmas and Quaker Christmas tea. Mm -hmm. And you'll see I I cornered the market. I went to probably three different people to collect all the 2500 I needed for this one. They wanted you to purchase, I think it was 
40 skeins wow of over dyed thread i said oh, oh sure. my gosh no way on this <laughs> world am i doing that so i looked at the amount of thread in a skein of flower thread i looked at the amount of stitches you get out of a skein of over dyed which is a five yard skein mm -hmm. and i calculated it based on two threads anyway i did all the math to end up with no, we're doing it this way because I think I managed to get all this for under $20. Mm, good. So that was a good thing. Good, good, good. And this, I love the fabric on this. I what like is the that? feel of it. It's just a cream linen. Oh, okay. I bought it at Salty Yarns, I think. Wow. It is nice. And and you'll see in the bird what I meant oh, by the variegation yes. there. Yep. So I'm sure it's different dye lots in the skeins. So I'm going to just change them out i like it go. it looks it looks great i really like it thank yeah. you yeah yeah very cool and and it's in this one too oh here too yeah yep. yep. i like it yeah thanks <laughs> so i'm having fun with that yeah very well cool. i was having fun <laughs> with that then i was your fun, fun meter how yeah. much fun are you having uh, uh, give yeah. it a three at the time i put it away i'm feeling a five coming on <laughs> yeah oh, it's gosh. moving up to the top of the stall <laughs> All right, so on our next stalled uh, piece, this one, I, I purposefully am stalling on this because it's like a good book that you don't want to finish reading. You want to read? Oh, oh. oh quiet. Do you write these notes to your teacher often? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Not only did the dog get my homework. But <laughs> um, I love this piece so much. Um, this is the Dimensions uh well, it was a kit, mm -hmm. and this is, uh, well, let me, I can show you the picture. I don't have anything else in here, I don't think. Anyway, here's the dimensions. Uh, it's called Scenic Farm. I am, like, more than halfway finished. I'm, like, over to here. And it is beautiful. I am it doing it on white linen, which, like Liz said, it's just a white linen. It is 40 count. Um, so I'm not using all of the threads and, and I'm not stitching it the way that they tell you to stitch it because there's a lot of tweeting where you're adding, you're mixing a lot of different colors. Well, with this being 40 count, I'm not going to be able to do, you know, three and four colors together, but it is an open, um, linen. Thank you very much. See the stash? Yo, yeah, there's, there's my no rat's, rat's nest. nest. There's right. my rat's yeah. nest. Had to point that out. Yeah, thank you. No <laughs> um, this is what I have completed so far. It is so pretty. Um, this is a really nice linen to work on, and I chose something that has a looser weave to it because I am stitching on 40 count with two threads. Now, in some of the, like the background here, that's just a tent stitch. So that is still with two threads, but it's just a tent stitch. Um, but everywhere else, you know, that it calls for a full cross, it's a, it's two strands and it is not bulky. It is not no. crowded. It's, it's beautiful. It is. All of the back stitch, of course, is just one strand. Uh, there's a lot of back stitching in this, which, you know, I don't mind. There's some sheep there in the front. I am going to put Hank over here on this side. Um, what? I don't know what's making that. <laughs> oh, it's Charlie. Sorry. <laughs> That's funny. I was just watching it go back and forth while you were rolling that up. It's all right. I hope I, Charlie, are you making everybody seasick? Doggy interrupt us. Yes. Um, anyway. Very Scenic beautiful. Farm by DMC. Yes. Very, yes. very pretty piece. Very popular piece. Yes, yes. In my hang bag. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. I'm trying to show some things that are not just stalled, but also unusual because... That's fun way. too. So this is one that Deb and I got the threads to do oh. at Strawberry Basket one time after our one of our earliest okay, retreat, uh, not retreat, excuse me, one of our earliest guild meetings with um, the Delaware Valley Guild. And we made sure we got all our thread. It was so exciting. This has uh, five colors. That's it. Mm -hmm. Bullfrog, Merlot, Grasshopper, seagull, and whiskey. So it's a, a simple palette. And the about. really fun part oh, of it. You okay? Okay. Is how easy and quick it goes. So Wyndham House Sampler, Rosewood Manor, 
This came out around 2014. So oh, that's funny. 10 years ago. That was when we joined the guild, I think. Back in the day. Back in the day. So this is where I am. And honest, I said it goes quickly. It does unless you're doing a border and your list. Or you stop stitching. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Stalled. <laughs> um, but the border um, is not hard. It's just you got to pay attention. That's all. <laughs> we know you love your borders. You got to pay attention to. But we got that far on oh, it. Yay. Funny. But the vase was so much fun to do. <laughs> and like I said, it's just, it was fun to do. I got, so, I got all the flowers done in the middle. I did the whole thing in the middle and then they got attacked by the border. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> as soon as I work my way around that oh corner, I'll be feeling better. <laughs> so see. it's funny. You pulled out a Rosewood Manor. I'm going to show I love that one. I do too. And the colors are similar too. Um, so this one is Cornwall Cottage. This is by Rosewood Manor. Same time frame, 2014. Mm -hmm. Yep. In fact, we got these at the same time. And this is what I have accomplished so far. Remember that time? I can't remember what this fabric is. Um, when the we basket were... started, I'm all the way across to the bottom. This is the corner. And then I just have to work my way up. Um, so that's it. And like Liz said with hers, very few colors in this one. What was really funny yep. was we got this first one. We ran and got the threads, fabric. Next thing I know, I see Deb pull more threads. I said, what are you doing? She goes, oh, I got the other one too. It's like, oh my gosh, now we got to pull more threads. <laughs> so then we're pulling more threads. But we ended up getting both of them. Yeah. I really, pretty. this is so pretty. It is beautiful. I'm not doing the alphabet, though. I know. I remembered you were changing that up, and I was just sitting here looking at that border and thinking, that looks so much not like a border. I might actually be able to stitch that. It might work for me. It's different the whole way around, Liz. Yep. You can do this one. They can. And nobody would be the wiser. And if you're off one, oh, who cares? That's the fun part. And where did it go? Don't the have to It's not matchy-matchy. <laughs> Now, this one is fun, and honestly, I think I will probably not keep this in my stall bin. I have to be that Ooh. up front. Your when excited I, meter is going. It is. This is definitely up there. It, it has very little on it done, which is kind of silly, <laughs> because yeah. when you see it, get off of there. Thank you. Um, it's a really pretty fabric. I wish I could remember what it is. Oh, look and see. <laughs> I think I had this in my stash is what I did. I do not think I recall what it was, but it's, um, I think I'm doing it one over and I'm showing you everything but the pattern. That was nice. It's from uh, Mojo Stitches. Oh, yes. It was the first one I had seen come into the shop when I was helping at Stitches Unlimited. And it was done um, in, a, I think there's, well, I don't know how many they have here now, but it's from Australia. Um, an Autumn Up North Quaker. Um, it's called Falling Leaves. And I did buy the... Um, cottage garden threads to try it out and they are really nice to stitch with show you what they look like um because they're kind of fun i put my initial threads onto my bunny ah. um just so i had them out where i could get to them but these are the the cottage oh i love her colors they're beautiful Needle. Yeah, and here's the ones I haven't popped out of the. They're pretty. The holders, but they are. They're they are very mm. pretty threads. So beautiful. That one's not going back in the stall bin. Okay, that one made it out. It did. He's free. Woo -hoo, Charlie. Yay. That's so exciting. Fly away and be free. <laughs> um. Okay, so for my next stalled piece. <laughs> My next trick. <laughs> <laughs> I brought out the uh, Summer by the Sea. I had collected all four sections because it, it's all, um, you have summer. Oh, okay. So never mind. It's <laughs> you, erase that. Okay. Starting over. <laughs> the 
This is By the Sea series. This is a Jeanette Douglas. Um, and so each corner has a different... Um, I can't believe you put that one away. I, I know. It took you so long to get it all collected. I know. A different season. So I started in the upper left corner with Summer by the Sea. And I'll just show you the charts first. I saved and got the thread packs at like a Super Bowl sale from Salty Yarns. Got all the charts. Chose the fabric. That's the Summer. This is the Winter by the Sea. And like I said, this is Jeanette Douglas, so there's so many fun and different stitches. Uh, you can add charms, all kinds of things. And I did get the thread and charm packs for all of them. This is Autumn. And I will say, if you were going to do one of her patterns and you really wanted to do it justice, you want to get her silk packs. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it would be, it would be yeah. cost prohibitive so they... to buy them all, but when she kits them, yeah. it, it's perfect. Yeah, and this one is the Spring. So, and it just has that beautiful area in the center there, you know, that every um, season um, has a piece to. This is really beautiful. I think I know why I stalled on this one. Yeah. Yeah. It reminded me I had this in there and I forgot about it. Go ahead. Okay. The fabric I chose is um, 32 count star sapphire. The color of it I love. Don't love that it is so open. Open. Yeah. I think that's driving me crazy. I remember you talking about um, that. And I do think that that's why it has been stalled. This is what I have completed so far. That How corner. Many fingers am I holding? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but if you see, I mean, you see right through it. Yeah, it's a very can... open weave. The color is beautiful. It is. But I'm, I'm, I think I may have to start over on a, a different piece of fabric hopefully i can find the same kind of color but i don't know i'm, I'm just not loving yeah loving that it makes a big difference doesn't it does it? and if i'm not loving it now i'm not gonna love it later mm -mm. so i might as well stop where i am now before i get any further i don't think i used too many threads where i'm gonna have a problem you know yeah. I, I jeanette usually i mean when she's putting her kits together I've never run out. Uh, I've used her kits before, like her thread packs, all that stuff. So I haven't gotten too far, I don't think. Um, so that's that. But she pulled out her Jeanette Douglas. I had to show you that these are, they're just great. Um, so her, the pin cushions that I do, which are hers, and this one got stalled and I'm not exactly sure why, but probably because of the season, it's fall. Um, and I had done all the rest of them. Gotcha. So I finally did start it, but again, her threads come with it and I just put them onto project cards so I could sort them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but this is all the farther I got before I set it aside. <laughs> it's like, why did I stop there? I, oh, gosh. I got, I got the center of the center flower. That's. <laughs> Wait, turn it around the other way. That's the back. <laughs> Oh, that's the front. Oh, yeah. Oh, Remember oh, when I do the small sorry. ones? That's so here's right. a little tip. That's funny. If you're doing a small piece and you're going to go pretty close to the edge, if you invert your hoop, then you can close off your threads without hitting your hoop with your needle while you're trying to slide your needle under your threads. And it's just a little easier to work on. So I, I invert it and then my my hoop is not impeding at all. Uh, what I do on the back of my fabric. So I'll have to try that. Yeah. Someday when I do something small. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I wanted to See show me you in like our Liz next life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to show you, like Liz said, you want to separate all the threads first. And um, I had these cards and, and I just wrote down, you know, what the, what is on there. And um, that way I'm only threading up each season as I go. I didn't go through and do all of those. I'm just going to finish the summer before I break out, you know, the next one and, and go from there. And then I just keep this little baggie, which tells me things I need to know. And it also has the charms and the beads in it on the same ring. Aren't you misorganized? <laughs> I try. 
Oh gosh. All right. So <laughs> what do we got now? I try. I have one more left. All right. So I'll pop over For to today. this one because this is very different too. I have plenty more stalled pieces, but we didn't want to bombard you. Yeah, we'll just keep it short. <laughs> so this was a heaven and earth design I got. I just love this artist, Randall Spangler. I had his pictures in my college dorm prints that I had found in a, a print shop. And he's just comical. So this little guy got my attention. I did not want to do what they consider a full-size piece. So I got what they call a bookmark, which I don't know what book you're looking at, but it's a big <laughs> one. Um, so that is the little guy. He's a dragon. Again, Ronald Spangler is the artist. And how many? Let's see. It has... Uh, I forget how many colors. I did add them up at one point. A bunch. Let's put it that way. A bunch of colors. So I actually made symbol cards for mine. Let's go organization for organization here. So I made little symbol cards that I actually put the symbol on next to the threads. And it had quite a few DMC. I did not, you can see by all the symbols, I didn't put them all on yet. Just the upper section I'm working on, which is a frightening thought. <laughs> when I look at how many holes are still vacant, that may be why it got stalled. Um, and these are the, the, it was funny because I had to have something to reference. So I made a color copy of this key with the threads on it so I could see the symbols. Um and have them in order. Cool. So there's a total of, I think, four pages of symbols mm. to do it. Um, now, here's the thing. We're on round two because when I first started it, I had this Congress cloth and I used a pen and I used um, like a non- a permanent pen, let's put it that way, so that it wouldn't bleed or smear. And I charted the whole thing. So this, is, when I say bookmark, I mean, you see what I'm saying? How big <laughs> is the book, right? I have the um, Encyclopedia Britannica <laughs> series. Remember those giant coloring books? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, foot longs. Uh, or no, three foot longs. Oh, gosh. So, I love those. I started and I got to here when I realized that they had the already gridded fabric available and we actually had it at uh, stitches unlimited when i was there and i thought doggone it why go to all that bother when i can get it already printed and start it on this and i like the feel of this better than the congress cloth i was working on and i, I wasn't a big fan of the blue but that's what i had so i was using oh, that little okay. strip i was sitting here wondering to myself but the work's done uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah so why did you start over well but if you and see the difference in the it's just a little smaller this is a 32 and this is a 28 i think so this square is just a tiny bit smaller than that square um i think it's going to be Let's see how this worked mm. out. Um, okay, so you can see it here. If I put it side by side, it looks to be about maybe two threads difference. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's 30 and 28. But I really, I like, feel that. Talking about, you know, that's what came right. to mind. You're talking about the fabric. Right. I like it better than this stiffer fabric. Okay. Since I stitch in hand, it makes it nicer okay. to hold. Yeah. So anyway. So we're, this is round two, round one. <laughs> Notice I didn't throw away round one because, you know, who knows? That uh, Just that little corner because it is complete full coverage. Yeah. That is a lot of stitches. That's 400, almost 500 stitches right Crazy. there. Yeah, this, there's a lot of stitches in this. It's actually, um, where did I see the stitch count? Uh, oh. da, da, da. There we go. 75 wide, 420 long. <laughs> Oh, okay, so this was 25 count. Okay. This is probably 28. That's okay. probably the difference. Oh my goodness. So. All right, the last one that I'm showing you today that I have stalled on <laughs> is A Savior's Praise, and it is by Shakespeare's Peddler. Absolutely beautiful people were doing this. was so popular. Lots, lots of people, lots of floss tubers have stitched this. 
and have changed it a little bit and personalized it and made it their own. Great ideas. I am stitching this on 40 count sheep straw by R&R &R, and I am doing it over one. So my, my savior's praise is going to be tiny. <laughs> um, eeny, beeny. eeny beeny. So this is it edge to edge. I think when it is finished, it will fit into an 8x10 frame. So that'll be cool. But I do have a lot of work done on it. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I have so far. Very nice. Thank you. A and lot of DMC colors. Um, I just went ahead and used my little tags and, you know, went ahead and put my threads on this um, little wooden piece. It looks like one of those little painters... Uh, uh, what do they call the palette? The painter's palette. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really cool. So I have those on there. And my last little dish is oh, this guy. I that one. Yes. And I honestly, I was, I was, I was booking on this when you I started. Were. I like the fabric. We we'll get that right a, out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> I like the fabric. That's a good summer stitch Quaker too. Bee. It is. So the story behind that, Deb and I were thinking of doing a stitch long when we first started our channel. We thought that'd be a cute, simple one, but they weren't producing them anymore. And we, yeah. couldn't, we couldn't give everybody an opportunity to get one. So no go. So here's why I think I stalled, to be honest with you. I started working down on the B. So I did the, the top part, started the Quaker pieces. And then I thought, I want to do some of the fun thread. So I started with the... Rainbow Gallery threads. I was just going to say. Which. It uh, almost looks like it's beads from this far away. Yeah. And it's the fuzzy stuff and whisper are the two amusing. Oh, whisper. And the fun part of that was I wanted to make the bee fuzzy. So it is. Oh, yeah. And, and it's going to be fun. But it is not as easy to stitch with on this linen as I thought it would be. It's very hard to tell where you've come in and out of because you've got all those little yeah. thingies in your way. Yeah. But I like the outcome of it, so I'm mm -hmm. happy. You'll see, um, I guess the easiest way would be to just describe where I am looking at this pattern. But I've come just up and around the corner of the wing here. That's all I've got with this gold so far. And... That bottom right corner there is just the beginning of the wing up and you can around. See that, you can see that dimension on there. Yeah. And it's a beautiful so, match to the other gold. Oh, I yeah. really like oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, um, obviously it'll be a beautiful match to the black because black, <laughs> black is black. It's 3371 yes. actually, not um, 310. And then I'm using the, the black whisper. Yeah. So. But I know exactly what you mean because when I did that one Santa beard for that pillow. Yes. I, and I was doing it in the white whisper. Mm -hmm. oh, same thing. I love the effect, but it is hard because it fills so much. It's hard to see where you came up and went down. Ugh. And part of me, I think I got to the place where I thought, do I really need to do a full cross? So I started trying to do just tent stitch, and then I don't think it's full enough. Yeah. So I am yeah. sticking with the full cross, yeah. but it's, it's just it's tedious. It's it is. It is. is that, that's a good word for it because it it's great when you're finished and the overall look is beautiful, but oy, not yeah. fun to oy. do it. Oy. <laughs> All right. So that was stall right. stash, and right. we have a little talk about finishes today too. And I do have a gadget that you haven't seen. Um, do you think we ought to throw that in there too? Sure. All right, Let's just so. show. I only have one finish. Yep. You go with yours. Well, it's a finish. Stuff that away. It's a finish, and then I decided to stitch more on it. <laughs> but I'm still <laughs> going to call it a finish. So, the Fractor oh, Flowers by La Dida. I finished everything you see there. <laughs> um, this is stitched on 46 count hazelwood, and I chose all of my own colors. And this is it. Love this fabric. That's only it's 40 a fiber, count? 46. Oh, okay. Um, this is uh, hazelwood and it's fiber on a whim. So that row down there that I'm doing, I'm not quite finished with that yet, but that's why uh, I'm finished, but I'm not quite finished because the way that I want to uh, mount this piece, I needed... I needed a little something in the bottom, like towards the bottom of it. So that's why I went ahead and I'm doing that. And that little motif that I'm stitching along the bottom came out of this book, again, that Liz showed you earlier. 
um, the ultimate sampler motif book. So once I get that finished going across there, then I can hopefully get it done. D U N done. Finish, finish, <laughs> as people say. Finish, finish. All right. So I'm happy with how it turned out. That's so pretty. I want to chat about finishes just a little because it's it's added a dimension to my needlework that I really enjoy, which is being able to sit and do hand finishing. Um, and I'll show you a couple pieces that are waiting to be finished. Just whet your appetite a little bit. This guy is waiting. It's a Patty Yergi pattern, Ocean City Crab, Maryland Crab. Um, and I really like it, but I haven't found yet exactly what I want to do to finish it. I'm still on the hunt. Deb's got her eyes open at Home Goods and anywhere else she goes trying to find something I can do with this. So this is still waiting. This little girl was my first thimble purse by Brenda Gervais, and that was so much so fun to cute. finish. And I lined it. <laughs> There's a penny in it. <laughs> I lined That's it. That's cute. And, and they did used to have a thimble in there, but I must have taken it out. That penny is dead. Um, and I found the little chains online and the uh, finishing hardware for the purse. So I have another one that I stitched, but I have not finished it. So that's next on the little mm. thimble purses. So cute. And I'm still trying to find the, I think it's the birds and flower thimble purse. There's one I'm looking for, but I haven't found yet. You just have to keep looking, I guess, because... Didn't Pat give you one? She did. And uh, I can't remember. I'll have to go back and look. At the, at the EGA retreat, we were just right, like, she... But I can't remember if it's the one I did or a different one. Oh, okay. I'll have to look. Okay. But yes, she's she's always so sweet. Mm -hmm. um, and then this other one, this is going to be a monumental finish. There are so many steps in this, and I've yes. not worked with um, Dupiani silks before. And you're supposed to use a machine, but I like to do it by hand. So I'm not sure how this is all going to unfold. If you don't have room for this one, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I can display here. But don't all I? the stitching <laughs> is done and has been. Uh, and it's just all here waiting for me to take them all apart and put them together and set up the basket. And oh, that's going to be so pretty. It is. And but you're right. That is going to take a lot of thought. Yes. And I need uh, space and... Quiet would be a good word mm -hmm. to focus. Um, I was going to yeah. show them, but I'm not sure where I set it. So we'll, ah, there it is. Yeah. So here, give you an idea. Oops. Move that out of the way. This is just oh my. the materials and instructions on how to finish this, this book. So it will take a while. And, um, our friend Leela was sweet enough that she did the same class. It was a uh, Shining Needle Society class with Jackie Duplices. And this is her stack of notes from all the people that communicated on the on-site That's cool. class time that she passed on to me because my file had expired, so I couldn't access it. Okay. So anyway, I got her notes. And then all the supplies that come along with it. It's just all just waiting to go. Yeah. So I just got to get to it. Yeah. But that one, I have to admit to picking up and putting down several times most recently because I really am excited to see that come together. Mm -hmm. And Leela's be was beautiful. Same. Oh my gosh. Yes, it? it was gorgeous. Yes, she did yes. it. Absolutely beautiful job on her. Mm. So now that I have been talking about finishing a little bit, um, this is the little guy I finished this week. You'd seen him stitch. Um, I just wanted to show you just some basic things. I'm going to do a second one in the green because they gave you fat, uh, threads to do either and buttons to do either. And I had another spool that I picked up while we were at Salty Yarns. So I can do a second spool to match. And all I used to do this little guy... Um, aside from what came with it was I got some, um, I guess you'd call it string or 
uh, that burgundy that you gave me. Oh, it's a yarn. A yarn. Mm -hmm. um, and I added a, another fiber to it and made a cord just using my little um, Lasix cord maker, mm -hmm. which is, we have a video on our uh, mm -hmm. playlist about how to use those. And it was fun. We made all kinds of uh, cording while we were doing the video. <laughs> And um, so I just attached that around the top. Um, I used glue, I will admit to that. I generally like to do everything with needle and thread, but I just did not want to do it on this one. It needed to be a little more pliable in the process than stitching it because of it was a little bigger than the spool, my fabric. So I had to play with it a little to get it mounted. And then they gave you the cord to hang it with and the buttons to go on top and bottom. I did not put it on the bottom because I just, you don't see it anyway, so mm -hmm. I left the button off the bottom. So there's my little Christmas spool from- Very cute. Um, with a needle, or no, my lady's needle, that's right. My lady's needle. My lady's, Gloria did that. We took a class from Gloria. Mm -hmm. And it involved a spool too. That was the little witchy mm -hmm. one, remember that? Yeah. That was fun. So the other thing that I did was I just painted the spool using my Waverly um, paints, painted it burgundy, and then I used Mod Podge over top because I wanted it to have a little bit of a shine to it and let that dry. Then, voila, put it on and Bob's your uncle. <laughs> there you go. So that was fun and easy. So finishing can encompass so many different things. Deb is an incredible painter. When she does her frames and other pieces that she finishes with, she does, she's got, I don't know how many different paints she has, but she's, <laughs> she can pull just the right color for that piece to accent it. And oh, nice. yeah, and you got that talent. Um, and then um, sometimes it's just a matter of sewing a piece of fabric to the back of something else and turn it into a pillow. And mm -hmm. that's fun too. It's mm -hmm. just anything you want to try. I just encourage you to do it. It's, it's forgivable. And that's why I like, I started mm -hmm. with the smalls because if I did a tiny project and I goofed it, I wasn't as unhappy about that as I would have been <laughs> if it was a bigger project and I goofed it. Sort of like those borders I play with. So that was fun. Fun finishes. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So let's uh, wrap it up with the gadget. Mm -hmm. We talked about bodkins a little bit on gadget galore. I had one that I had shown, and it was by Clover. Back in the day when we first did bodkins, we showed the old-style metal one with just the slit in the back. Do you remember those? Yeah. And they were used to run your elastic or your ribbon or whatever else you needed to through your casing. This just takes it another step. This is kind of fun. I showed this to Deb. I said, this is really wonky. But it's, it's definitely a gadget. Yeah. So it's, again, by Clover. And it is a bodkin it's kind of, stuff there. of sorts. So it's just on their standard packaging. And this is the gadget. And what's fun about it is it has the tip on it that most bodkins do to pass through the casing. But how many times have you been putting something through your casing and had your safety pin come out the back or had the ribbon fray. And this little guy has a, a little oh, yeah. bite on mm -hmm. the end of it that when you lift that lever, you slide your fabric in here or your ribbon or whatever it is between those two jaws, if you will. It's like a little alligator, yeah, if you it will. Is, yeah. And then you just snap that down onto it and it's not going anywhere. Hmm. And I really like that. I do too. You can yeah. fumble with these things forever when oh, yeah. it comes off. Oh, and yeah. then you've got your pencil or your knitting needle or your chopstick or whatever yeah. else you're trying <laughs> to push it through the rest of the way without having to pull it out and start over yeah. again. I know yeah. I've tried that so many times. So I really do like this. Um, I do have a couple of things that uh, Blue Quaker basket that I'm going to be putting together has several places where you're threading things and I'll, I'll mm. put this to the test and let you know how it okay. works out. Cool. So again, yeah, I like it. Clover Bodkin Option 10. <laughs> it's called a, a Clip and Glide Bodkin. Ah. I will put that information in the description box <laughs> for any other gadget 
phonetics. Okay. Well, thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. That was fun. And we thank you for joining us. That's a wrap. And we look forward <laughs> to seeing you soon. As always, share, share the joy of work. Bye-bye.